In this video, we're going to give ourselves a tour of eukaryotic cells. So what we have to do first is just remind ourselves of what it means for a cell to be eukaryotic. In general, it basically means that the cell has membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles are like subcompartments in the cell with different roles to fulfill in order to maintain the function and health of the cell. Today we're going to highlight some particular membrane-bound organelles that are fundamental to the survival of the cell. One issue is that some organelles are in select types of cells. So what we'll do first is list off some organelles that are in all cells. So first, we obviously have our cell membrane. And then, most cells will have some form of genetic information. One of the unique qualities of eukaryotic cells is that its DNA is enclosed in a membrane-bound organelle. This organelle is the first one that we'll talk about, and is known as the nucleus. Its main purpose is acting as the control center of the cell and enveloping the genetic information. On the outside of the nucleus, we can see these holes, and these are known as nuclear pores. These are used to connect to another important organelle known as the endoplasmic reticulum. It's very near the nucleus, and the organelle looks like these layers of membranes that have a lot of surface area. The main purpose of the endoplasmic reticulum is transportation of genetic information out of the nucleus. For example, some DNA will be occasionally transcribed into mRNA. After that, it will move out of the nucleus, through the nuclear pores, and into the endoplasmic reticulum. Once this is done, the mRNA will enter another organelle, which is one of the few organelles without a membrane, and it is known as the ribosome. We've lightly touched on ribosomes before, but their main purpose is taking genetic information, like mRNA, and translating it into proteins. This makes ribosomes responsible for protein synthesis. These organelles are extremely tiny and are sparsely spread out in the cell cytoplasm and are known as free ribosomes. Some of them are on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, and that is how they receive some of the mRNA. Not all endoplasmic reticula have ribosomes on its surface, however. Ones with ribosomes are known as rough endoplasmic reticula, and ones without ribosomes are smooth endoplasmic reticula. This is because of how the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short, looks like through a microscope when it has or doesn't have ribosomes. There is actually another organelle that is very similar to the endoplasmic reticulum with a similar shape and function. This is known as the Golgi apparatus. It packages molecules and proteins to be used outside of the cell. One difference between the Golgi apparatus and the ER is that the Golgi bodies are not attached to the nuclear membrane or ribosomes. The Golgi apparatus is normally free-floating within the cytoplasm. In other videos, we'll go into detail on how a protein might go to a Golgi body and get some sort of envelope around it to be ready to be shipped out of the cell. The next organelle is one of the most well-known structures in the cell, as it's commonly known as the powerhouse of the cell, and it is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is mostly known for being the primary source of chemical energy generation, which is where it gets its name, the powerhouse of the cell. However, one fascinating thing that a lot of people don't know about mitochondria is that they actually have their own DNA. And all of your mitochondrial DNA comes from your mother, which is particularly interesting for tracing maternal lineage. So going back to the main function of the mitochondria, we now know that they generate chemical energy. But how do they do this, and what form of chemical energy do they generate? We'll see the process in further depth in the future, but the process is actually relatively complex, and the chemical energy comes in the form of ATP, which is also known as adenosine triphosphate. One thing that a lot of evolutionary biologists believe is that since mitochondria has its own DNA, they might have been an independent organism billions of years ago. Then, what most likely happened was that it was engulfed by a protocell and began to live in symbiosis with a protocell. Over time, they probably became so codependent that they started to replicate each other, which is why mitochondria is now an organelle found in all eukaryotic cells. Now if this eukaryotic cell was a plant cell, like an algae cell for example, it would have an exclusive set of organelles called chloroplasts. These organelles are responsible for photosynthesis in plants by capturing light energy and using it to convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich organic compounds such as glucose. 
animal cells, such as human cells, don't have chloroplasts because we humans don't need to go through the process of photosynthesis for energy since we have a whole digestive system to extract nutrients from the foods we eat. This means that chloroplasts are one of the organelles in eukaryotic cells that are only found in plant cells and not animal cells. One of the organelles that are not so well known as the mitochondria or the nucleus per se is the vacuole. In plant cells, vacuoles can often be very large, taking up around half of the cytoplasm sometimes. But in animal cells, they are about the same size as all the other organelles. Vacuoles contain water and enzymes for the most part, and have a main purpose of acting as a storage compartment for the cell. However, the enzymes in the vacuoles can sometimes break down materials that are no longer needed as well. A very similar organelle to the vacuole, which is found in both animal and plant cells, is the lysosome. However, the lysosome is a relatively small organelle in both types of cells, unlike the vacuole. These organelles are packed with enzymes and normally help with breaking down waste products or foreign substances that are not supposed to be there. So you could think of it as the stomach of the cell, just not for food digestion. So those are all of the most important membrane-bound organelles that are found in eukaryotic cells. There are still many more that will slowly be introduced when necessary, but this is the general idea of what you will find in the majority of a cell's cytoplasm. However, there are lots of things in the cytoplasm that are not organelles and serve other purposes. On top of that, we also have lots of structures protruding out of the cell, such as cilia, flagella, and pseudopodia, which we addressed in one of the previous videos. In general, what all of this goes to show is the complexity of the cell, which is what it always seems to look back to. If we were able to shrink ourselves to a microscopic level and enter a cell, it would be busier than the biggest metropolises that we have on the human scale. So even after all the things that we've just learned, we're still just scratching the surface of the complexity of the most basic unit of life. So in the next video, we'll take a closer look at the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, which are the two main divisions of cells. But for now, I thank you all for watching.